My name is Mike. Um, I'm a second year chiropractor in here with Richard Parks to cover some some of the aspects of the talk we heard earlier on today at the um, at the Open Day Conference. So the one thing I want to know is being um, you know an avid rugby player, and you know most of your other previous expeditions were involved in sort of big teams. You had your camera crew there and things. When you did the South Pole expedition, how did you deal with the element of solitude? You know the days and days when it was just you. Um. Through systems, Mike, if I'm being honest, the 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 late the last expedition uh, in Antarctica, the speed record expedition, it, I was working at such a level that efficiency and systems were paramount to the success of that project, and so like every single minute of every single day had to be focused on something or, or had to be accounted for, because ultimately I needed to get as much time moving, skiing, and as much time sleeping, and cut down all the waste in between. So it was a really focused expedition um, and ironically since coming back it's been the psychological and emotional fatigue that, that, uh, that has needed the most recovery as opposed to the physical stuff but you know I really see that expedition as a, as a 19 month project that I did the last 29 days on my own um, even though it was a solo expedition, even though I was self filming, uh, even though it was unsupported I still had a huge not huge, but I still had an amazing network, a support network of, of physios, doctors, um, PR managers, um, um, you know, website managers, uh, kit designers, all, all the people that came together to make that exhibition possible. And uh, when I had tough days out there, it's a value that you know well, that I know well, a value of being part of a team that kept me going, you know, because I wouldn't want to let anybody down even though I was on my own. Excellent. And um, you said when you didn't ski you used to very quickly with very little sleep. Did you do any sleep deprivation training? Absolutely. Um, my preparation for all my expeditions is meticulous and I think it's a, it's a, it's a very big factor in the success of the projects but um, I, I used three races in the, in the year in the build up to Antarctica I went to Antarctica the year the Christmas before and then off the back of that I used three races. It was a uh, mountain bike race in Nepal, uh, 5,500 metres altitude. Uh, it was a self-supported uh, 250 kilometre marathon in the Amazon jungle and a double Ironman, so twice Ironman distance in, in Wales. And these events were to help me prepare psychologically and technically as much as it were a physical fitness test. So when it comes to sleep deprivation, the, the brutal, I think I was competing for 38 hours. Um, and that was really tough. It's one of the, literally one of the toughest things. Uh, it's certainly up there with some of the toughest things I've done, but, but that was a key part of, of that type of training. It's something that I call deprivation training, and it means um, putting myself under stress or in a, in a, in a tough situation or environment to prepare myself psychologically as much as physically so there was the brutal 38 hours in brutal the uh the jungle uh, ultra marathon was 250 kilometers in five days self-supported so um sleeping in a hammock you know just uh while sleeping a lot of the times you know not getting very good night's sleep that was all part of that as well so ultimately the the, the purpose is when it comes to the expedition you know I'm operating within, reasonably within my comfort zone, um, as opposed to, you know, being way outside it when you can make bad decisions or make errors. Because ultimately, the consequences of a mistake in Antarctica are catastrophic. When we were downstairs, you were talking about some of the uh, the things you'd like to look into to look at, say. She said that your immune response went up yeah. when you were fatigued, mm. and um, that you had some sort of a, what do you say? Uh, they had a different reaction when you when you hear the HPT, was that about the immune response? Yeah, yeah, and uh, so cognitive function as well. Yeah, so what would be, do you think, out of the cognitive function of the immune response, would be the next best study to look into? What would you rather people wow. looked into for you, for your next? Wow, for me, question, wow. Um, that's a great question, and um, it's fascinating. I, the, the honest truth is the, the, the data that we collected from Antarctica has posed more questions than it gave answers. And yeah. I think, I, I could be wrong, but I imagine that's the case for a lot of 
novel and cutting edge uh, um, um, research projects. I personally um, would be really interested to understand why I am able to perform in those environments. Um, as a rugby player, I hated the ice bath. Um, I, you know, I, I, I trained really hard as a rugby player. You know, I wasn't I had a great career. I'm really proud of my career, but you know, I worked bloody hard. I wasn't exceptional or anything like that. I, I, I got success through hard work. However, I do have the ability to perform at altitude. I acclimatise well. Um, the results of some of the tests that we did show that I do have a, a reasonably unique or extreme response to stress. Um, my body seems to get stronger the more stress I'm under. Um, ironically, just the cardiac screening that I did here up at the Glintoff campus highlighted that uh, I had an abnormal heartbeat, uh, which actually settled and regular, regularized, is that right? It became regular under duress, under stress. So uh, just me personally, and I guess from a really selfish point of view, I would be really fascinated to understand a little bit more about myself. But um, you know, that's the privileged place that I'm in because the opportunity to work with you guys and to work with students, you know, means that um, I can actually give back through my exhibition. So the exhibitions become holistic, yeah. and it's not just a self-gratifying project. It actually adds value to a student, adds value to our understanding of human performance, and and to the university and my sponsors. So I don't know if I've answered your question, but it, it, it would. Uh, there are so many questions out there, and for me, um, it's a real privilege just to be able to, to add value to that, that body of knowledge, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, having, having seen that you have this extreme you know, response to stress and you seem to cope better when you're under extreme stress, do you think that there's an element that you, maybe you're meant to do these things? There's an element, oh, yeah, this is what you're meant to do rather than rugby, this is destiny? Um, I'm not sure if, if I believe in the concept of destiny. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure of, of, of an answer on that level. There is a but to this though, but um, the skills that we learn in rugby, the skills that I have as a, as a professional rugby player are, are transferable. And I think that, you know, that's something that I've really learned. As a rugby player, I couldn't see beyond the end of rugby. And uh, when I retired, you know, it was a really dark place, a very difficult period for me. You know, I was scared, I was, I wasn't ready to, for that next chapter, um, I was angry and through hard work and, and people that I've met and, and a little bit of lady luck, I am privileged to be in a different chapter of my life now doing very different things but accessing a lot of the skills and values like the teamwork we spoke earlier from rugby and uh, I love what I'm doing now. I. Honest, I do love what I'm doing now, and, and you know I'm I'm able to earn a living doing doing it, and um, I'm pretty good at it. But a lot of a lot of what makes me a lot of what makes it possible for me to do what I do now, I learned as a rugby player, combined with new skills and new um, tools that I've learned more recently to to all pull together. Um, and I think that's that's something that I wish I knew as a player because, you know, rugby players or high performance sports people are really employable and they have a huge amount of skills that are transferable and, and you know, today's society, we don't set off in a career for life, do we? We, we have these phases and chapters and uh, having confidence to walk into that next chapter, you know, boldly with the whole toolbox of skills is, is something that that I have now that I didn't have when I retired as a player.